Even if my own father were an heretic, I would personally gather the wood with which to have him burned. Paul IV, Pope and Inquisitor. For 450 years, secrets and terror were an integral part of the Roman Inquisition. It still exists to this very day. We are the first film team in the world to go through the files of the Inquisition in order to seek the truth behind the dark legend. St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, the 12th of March of the Holy Year, 2000. In a public ceremony, the Pope asks God's forgiveness for the sins of the Church. This has never before happened in the 2,000-year history of the Christian faith. Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, the highest keeper of the faith, prays with the Pope. It is an act replete with symbolic power, for Cardinal Ratzinger is head of the successor to an infamous institution, the Roman Inquisition. It has been centuries since the last human being was burned in Rome in the name of God, but the Church and the Pope are still burdened with this difficult legacy to the present day. Mit diesem Akte fällen wir das Urteil gegen den Bruder Giordano Bruno und erklären ihn als einen verstockten und hartnäckigen Heretiker. Wir verdammen alle deine Bücher und Schriften als ketzerisch und irrig. Und wir bestimmen, dass alle, welche entweder bereits im Besitze oder in Zukunft zu Händen des Heiligen Offiziums kommen werden, öffentlich verbrannt werden mögen. Auch sollen diese Bücher auf den Index der verbotenen Bücher gesetzt werden, Und es soll so geschehen, wie wir befohlen haben. Ich der Weißmärtyrer! Ihr alle seid verflucht! Weg! Verflucht bis für den Rest eures Lebens! Ich werde durch die Flammen ins Paradies aufsteigen! Aber ihr werdet in der Hölle enden! Ich befehle meinen Geist in deine Hände! Und so erheben wir denn unsere Stimme und verkünden es, dass wir dich verurteilen und degradieren und dass wir befohlen haben und angeordnet, dass du von nun an ausgestoßen seist und dem weltlichen Arm überliefert. Ihr werdet die Qualen leiden, für ewig, wie ich es leide. Wir alle werden über leiden. On the Campo dei Fiori in Rome, there is a heroic memorial to Giordano Bruno. It is a monument against the Inquisition. If he hadn't died at the stake, Bruno might be forgotten today, a philosopher and monk, a fanatic and hero who chose death rather than recant his beliefs. We still speak about the victims of the Inquisition today, but who were their accusers, their judges, their executioners? The name of the Grand Inquisitor, Giulio Antonio Santori, provoked terror in Giordano Bruno's time and was only mentioned in a whisper. For decades, 
He was the heart and the hand of the Inquisition. Today, he is practically forgotten. The Palace of the Holy Office in Rome. It is here that Bruno, Galileo, and countless others were tried. For centuries, it has housed the well-guarded archives of the Inquisition. The Roman Inquisition still has the same headquarters, only its name has changed. It is now officially known as the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. It is presided over by Cardinal Ratzinger. He has come to a decision that is not easy for his agency and opened the archives to researchers. The impression had arisen that we have terrible things to hide here and that we were the only archives, save those of the Central Committee of the Soviet Union, afraid of public scrutiny. This impression had to be corrected. It is also important for history, historical research, and for the honesty of the Church in dealing with its own legacy to expose the cards of history. We have nothing to fear, for the mistakes of the Church were mistakes of the Church's children, and the image of the Inquisition can't get any worse than it is. The opening of the archives of the Inquisition in January 1998 to independent researchers caused a worldwide sensation, for until then, the archives had been the Secretum Secretorum, the most secret of secrets, the secret heart of the Inquisition. For centuries, the Roman Inquisition has been equated with unbridled torture and the shedding of innocent victims' blood. Now researchers can attempt to determine if this picture tells the truth. What drove men like Grand Inquisitor Santori to do what they did? I came into a hidden world of treasures, a world which I didn't know at all and which one can safely say no one else knew at that stage. New Zealand-based researcher Peter Godman was the first to be granted access to the archives of the Holy Roman and Universal Inquisition, or Holy Office for short. The files housed in the archives preserve the history of the oldest court still in existence and the oldest secret service agency still in operation. The archives of the Holy Office and the index of prohibited books are historical pillars of the Italian and Catholic European memory in general. There is nothing more fascinating, it seems to me, than to work with a document which is 500 years old, which has never been seen before, and which until very recently was also top secret. And some of these hands some of these anonymous, as it seems, human beings who sat and worked in the Inquisition, we can now identify. We are now able to decipher long forgotten names. But even more than that, the files reveal the most secret thoughts of the Inquisitors. Their signatures embodied the power over life and death. Peter Godman has traced the activities of Cardinal Santori and his helpers. When one reverses the perspective and begins to think of the Inquisition not only as everyone has always thought about it, that is from the point of view of the people who are being prosecuted, Galileo Bruno, but instead from the point of view of the judge. Then one, become, uh, one receives a completely new picture of the kinds of people who worked here. And that is the fundamental thing that interests me. I wish to understand how the inquisitors thought. What kind of man became an inquisitor? How did he work? How did you make a career in the inquisition? Giulio Santori is born in 1532, in the midst of one of the most troubled times the Catholic Church has ever seen. 
the triumphant progress of the Reformation seems unstoppable. Even the rulers of many European countries are converting to Luther or Calvin and decreeing their new faith as the state religion. With the help of the recently invented printing press, heresy is threatening even those bastions of Catholicism, Italy and Spain. The popes have long stood by and watched as their power waned. But a new generation of fanatics loyal to the papacy take up the fight and arm themselves for the counter-reformation. Their most effective instrument is the Inquisition. One vital thing to understand when one thinks of the early years of the Roman Inquisition is the mentality of the inquisitors is that of soldiers. They think they are fighting a war. Or they think they are doctors and that they are curing a cancer of the soul. This way of thinking soon takes hold of the young Santori. Santori had studied law and grown up in the small town of Caserta in southern Italy. Even there, the Protestants are destroying the holy symbols of the Catholic faith, which they see as indications of idolatry. As a young man, Santori had been reckless and succumbed to the lure of women and gambling. Now he changes his life and gives up his lucrative work as a lawyer. His new goal is to combat the Protestants. As vicar general of the Bishop of Caserta, Santori becomes one of southern Italy's first inquisitors. With the exception of a few pathological cases and examples of particular indifference, one cannot really speak of an inquisition mentality. We must remember that the Inquisition was considered the highest congregation in the Catholic Church. A position in the Inquisition was of great importance in furthering a priest's career. wappnete ich mich gegen sie mit dem Eifer des katholischen Glaubens. In einem Winkel meines Gartens gab es eine kleine Kapelle mit einem Bildnis der Madonna. Dahin zog ich mich jedes Mal zurück, um zu beten und mich zu geißeln, wenn ich gegen die Lutheraner Dispute führen musste. Und ich fühlte mich wundervoll erglüht und gestärkt und befreit von jeder Furcht vor etwas Bösem oder einer Gefahr. Dabei spürte ich eine so große Freude und Heiterkeit in mir, dass ich sehnlichst danach begehrte, für den katholischen Glauben getötet zu werden. Und ich versuchte mit all meiner Kraft und der Macht des Amtes, diese grausame Pest aus meinem Land zu vertreiben. Dafür wurde ich von den Ketzern aufs Schärfste verfolgt, die mich auf allen Wegen anzugreifen und zu töten versuchten. Exzellenz, hier ist die Liste mit den notwendigen Namen. Wir werden milde walten lassen und nur vier aburteilen als hartnäckig und verstockt. Gallo, Tozzi, Toscarini, Alberto. Das wird den anderen als Warnung dienen. Sie sind vielleicht noch nicht für den rechten Glauben verloren. Das ist unmöglich, mein Sohn. Wir werden niemanden auf den Scheiterhaufen schicken. Wir würden sonst sofort hier den Aufstand hätten. Habt ihr vergessen, Exzellenz? Aus Rom kommt andere Orde. Der Heilige Vater und sein mit allen Privilegien ausgestatteter Großinquisitor, seine Eminenz, Michele Gislini. Wusstet ihr eigentlich, dass der von euch so angeschwärmte Großinquisitor Gislieri vor kurzem bald zu Tode gekommen wäre? Die Ketzer wollten ihn in einen Brunnen werfen. Er wäre als Märtyrer gestorben. Nun, was ist mit dem Gesetz? Das Gesetz? Das Gesetz ist nichts, wenn es sich nicht durchsetzen lässt. Rom ist weit, mein Sohn. Den Ärger, den haben wir aber hier. 
Unsere Kirche muss kämpfen. Und aufhören zu leiden. Ich. Wir werden die Ketzer zurück über die Alpen jagen und sie dann dort vernichten. Die Lutheraner, die Calvinisten. Die Ketzer haben euch müde gemacht und fett. In 1555, a much feared inquisitor ascends to the papal throne, Paul IV. He grants the court unlimited power. His right hand is Cardinal Ghislieri, the first man in Rome granted the honorific title Grand Inquisitor. The Roman Inquisition, founded in 1542, is based on a long tradition. The tribunals of the Middle Ages and the infamous Inquisition of the King of Spain. In medieval times, heretics such as the Cathars were burned at the stake, as was Joan of Arc, who was later canonized. Courts presided over by bishops generally passed judgment without asking the Pope in Rome. In order to increase the Catholic Church's strike power, the new Inquisition answers directly to the Pope. As a court whose decisions are binding for all Catholics, it demands that everyone submit to it unconditionally. The principal cruelty that was generated by this method was a culture of suspicion. And what I found in the archives very frequently, less in Italy than is, was the case in Spain, but nonetheless present, is a climate of distrust. I found members of families who denounce other family members. I found son against father, mother denouncing daughter. I found what seems to me extremely grave and what the church itself condemns, cases of priests who revealed to the Inquisitor information which was given to them in the confessional. For the Roman Inquisition, justice means that everyone is under suspicion of heresy, even bishops or papal diplomats. In the Middle Ages, heretics were to be either converted or destroyed. Now the Inquisition is also fighting against dangerous ideas and trying to prevent the dissemination of printed matter by the Protestants. The Index Librorum Prohibitorum is compiled, the Index of Prohibited Books. In a period of only four years under Paul IV and his Grand Inquisitor Ghislieri, tens of thousands of books are burned, as well as dozens of people. The rule of Paul IV fills Santori with new hope. For the people of Rome, however, it is a reign of terror. It is 1559. The despised Pope is at death's door. The people, which have until now been so fearful, dare to rebel openly. An angry mob storms the seat of the Inquisition and frees the prisoners. The Inquisitors themselves only barely escape with their lives. Their palace goes up in flames. The deeds of Paul IV had not found favor with the Roman people. When he died, rebels attacked the Inquisition and its archives and burnt many files. This tragedy for the archives is reflective of the history of the Inquisition. It is a shock for Santori. The new pope bows to the wrath of the people and drastically curbs the powers of the Inquisition. But in 1563, the long-awaited reward for the persecution he has suffered finally seems near. Rome is calling. Better yet, the Holy Inquisition is calling. 
Now, of all times, a series of attempts on the Pope's life causes a panic in Rome. Santori believes he is the right man to meet this challenge as Inquisitor in Rome. Impatiently, he awaits an audience with his idol, Grand Inquisitor Ghislieri. Euer Materium in den nördlichen Provinzen, Eminenz, war für mich in all den traurigen Jahren der einzige Ansporn. Du scheinst ist für viel zu wissen über die abscheulichen, verbrecherischen Anschläge auf das Leben des Heiligen Vaters. Selbstverständlich. Zwei Anschläge. Mit Kugeln erst und dann mit Gift. Mich interessiert deine Meinung. Du bist immerhin ein schon durchaus erfahrener Inquisitor in der Provinz Caserta. Was meinst du? Ist ein Einzelner fähig zu solchen Taten? Ich habe in Caserta ganz ausgeschlossen. Es bedarf Vorbereitung und Dunkelmänner. Dunkelmänner. Angenommen, einer der Täter ist gefasst. Wie ist das weitere Vorgehen der Heiligen Inquisition? Der Beschuldigte wird zu einem Vortermin geladen, bei dem der Inquisitor sich ein Bild macht, ob der Verdächtige im Kerker festgesetzt werden muss oder nicht. Bei diesem Gespräch ist nur ein Schreiber anwesend. Du bist kein Freund des Heiligen Vaters. Dein Name steht hier als Anstifter des letzten Attentates auf das Leben des Heiligen Vaters. Ich? Ich liebe den Heiligen Vater. Santori is arrested. He could not have a harsher prosecutor than Grand Inquisitor Ghisleri. Ghisleri is proud of belonging to the Dominican Order. In the Middle Ages, the Dominicans were known for producing the most merciless inquisitors. Georges Cotier is the Pope's theological advisor and a Dominican himself. He's troubled by the fanatic tendencies in his order. At the time, people didn't grasp that it is incompatible with the gospel to defend it with brutal methods. I do not consider examples of pathological types a problem because such cases will always exist. This is part of the general misery of the human condition. But some of the monks were filled with grand ideas and in the belief that they were doing their duty, condemned others to death, even though they might have suffered mental anguish in doing so. After months of incarceration, the charges against Santori proved to be unfounded and the result of a conspiracy against him. Ghisleri, who is impressed by the young Inquisitor's boldness, releases him. One year later, Ghisleri becomes Pope. He is known as Pius V. This is a turning point for Santori. The former Grand Inquisitor recognizes a kindred spirit in Santori and sees to it that all doors are open to him. Santori is made bishop and soon afterwards cardinal. He is only in his mid-thirties at the time. Soon, Ghisleri appoints him to the highest committee of the Inquisition and Santori becomes a member of the inner circle of power. One of Pius V's first official acts as Pope is one of great symbolic power. 
he has a new, better guarded palace built for the Inquisition. The newly created archives of the Inquisition also find their home here, a faithful reflection of the Inquisition's growing claim to power. La congregazione è diventata, eh, come ho detto prima, una istanza dottrinale, ma anche una istanza di liderato culturale, una istanza di... Eh, Within a century and a half, the Inquisition became no longer purely concerned with doctrine, but also became a cultural authority. It dealt with matters of faith, but also with various aspects of life in society, such as homosexuality, polygamy, usury, medicine, mystical phenomena, and Jews complaining of problems with the authorities. Under Ghislieri and Santori, the trials of heretics have turned into lavish spectacles. They are held several times a year in the main church of the Dominicans, Santa Maria Sopra Minerva. The people of Rome now enjoy the pompous autos da fe. Even the cardinals and inquisitors barely manage to find a seat, so large are the crowds. Santori sits in the first row. He watches attentively as the heretics receive their just punishment. Everything is duly recorded by board notaries. The heretic is condemned to row in the papal galleys. The sentence to the galleys, which were nothing less than a living hell, often lasted for five long years. And when the sentence to the galleys was passed by the cardinal inquisitors, the notary of the Roman Inquisition drew the galley, which you see here. In the next case, a figure accused of immorality was condemned to be beaten. And what you here see is the club. At the autos da fe, Santori does not face nameless heretics. He encounters those who once reported him to the Inquisition, and even one of his former jailers. However, there is a crucial difference. This time it is Santori who has the upper hand. So war auch am 15. Juni 1566, einem Samstag, Hortensio Aperticchio, wegen der Verleumdung, die er damals gegen mich angezettelt hatte, aufgehängt worden. Es verging auch nicht viel Zeit, bis Monsignore Palantiero enthauptet wurde. Zu meinem großen Bedauern, da ich ihm die Höflichkeit und Freundlichkeit, die er mir erwiesen hatte, als ich wegen der Verleumdung durch den Aperticchio im Gefängnis war, nicht hatte erwidern können. Lang ist es nicht her. Da war Monsignore Palantiero mein Ankläger und Kerkermeister. Und fast hätte er mich aufs Schafott geführt. So ändern sich die Dinge dieser Welt. Und vor allem in Rom, wo nichts und niemand jemals sicher ist. In 1572, Ghislieri, or rather Pius V, dies. The people of Rome mourn the death of this strict ascetic, and indeed, the Pope will later be canonized. His holiday, April the 30th, is celebrated every year in his palace, the Palace of the Holy Office. To this day, Pius V is the patron saint of the Inquisition. Even after the death of his protector, Santori's power continues to increase steadily. In 1583, he himself becomes Grand Inquisitor. Thirteen popes come and go within his lifetime. Santori remains more influential than almost any of them. He is a highly efficient bureaucrat 
who perfects the system of inquisitorial investigation. The fundamental point that lies in the mind of every inquisitor is when there is one, there will be two, three, four or five. And the interrogation begins always with this point. The question with which every inquisitor begins every trial is, do you know why you are here? From the lips of Santori, this first question might be enough to loosen the tongue of many a defendant. Countless cases land on Santori's desk. He only manages to get through the heavy workload thanks to his many years of experience. This is the hand of the Grand Inquisitor. Look at this handwriting. Its first characteristic is its irregularity, not to say its ugliness. This is not the script of a scholar or an intellectual. It is the script of a bureaucrat in a hurry. And the reason why the writing is so large is in the 1570s, Cardinal Santori developed an eye problem. He read and wrote with difficulty. The Cardinal wrote ever bigger, ever more untidily, ever more without organization, shape or form. Santori must also consider the question of whether or not to employ torture. The Inquisition actually uses torture less often and in greater moderation than the secular courts do. Torture is supposed to draw out the evil in the defendant and at the same time cleanse him of it. What is highly questionable about the inquisitorial method is that the accused is not given the, name, the names of those who denounced or accused him. He does not know officially where the testimony against him comes. At that point, he defends himself before the cardinals, and it is only when the accused falls into self-contradiction or the inquisitors suspect that he is keeping information back that torture is applied. And torture consists of being hoisted up on a pulley with ropes and then dropped. Normally, this lasts for 30, 40 minutes. It can last as long as an hour. What uns eben nachdenklich macht ist, dass ein historischer Kontext what gives us cause for thought is that the historical context can dull the conscience of even truly good people to such an extent that they are unable to recognize it. For it was even saints who condoned this, people who lived their lives in God and felt a profound inner bond to Jesus and his word. And yet, in this historic context, parts of their conscience were so blinded that we cannot fail to be appalled. Erblindung von Teilen des Gewissens erfahren haben, die uns erschrecken muss. Cardinal Santori is undoubtedly the most successful inquisitor in the Holy Office. He manages to hold on to power for more than 40 years, thanks to a cleverly devised system of helpers and informers devoted to him. One of these is a Spaniard, Francisco Peña. Peña, the highest judge of the Roman Rota, the court of the Vatican, is one of the most important consultants in the trial of Giordano Bruno. Peña is highly educated, but also extremely fanatical. No one is secure from this obsessive informer, not even the Pope himself. The Pope reads prohibited books he secretly reports to Santori. Sometimes, even the power of popes is no match for that of inquisitors. Santori's second major ally is Robert Bellamine, a Jesuit and the most important Catholic theologian of his era. At the trial of Bruno, it is he who proves that the philosopher's ideas are heretic. For a long time, Bellamine is merely a brooding scholar, but Santori promotes him to the position of consultant to the Inquisition. Bellamine gets a taste of the temptation of power, 
and also a taste of its more bitter ingredients. A merciless competition arises between him and the ambitious Pena. A tiny mistake is sufficient in order to run aground in the labyrinths of the Vatican. Bellamine is denounced to the Pope and suddenly finds his works on the index of prohibited books. Inquisitor Bellamine is now, in the Pope's eyes, a heretic himself. But Santori stands by his protege. We are learning now to read a new language. First point, a division at the center of power. No master plan of repression but instead something like a civil war between the central authorities of the church, in particular, very frequently, between the Pope and the Holy Office, or between the Congregation for the Index of Prohibited Books and the Inquisition, fighting it out over particular issues and by no means unified. Santori simply waits for the Pope's death and then revokes the ban against Bellamine. This, even though the Pope is the actual head of the Inquisition and his Grand Inquisitor is merely his deputy. In the past, Santori had often enough manipulated the Popes like so many puppets on a string. Now that is no longer enough to satisfy him. In 1592, he himself reaches for the Papal Tiara. The rules governing how Papal elections are conducted are centuries old. The cardinals enter conclave next to the Sixteen Chapel to decide who will be the next pope. The election in 1592 is one of the most dramatic in the entire history of the church. Man wird uns erfroren als Eisblöcke heraustragen. Vielleicht will uns der Herr nur mahnen, endlich einen energischen und gesunden Mann aus unseren Reihen zu wählen. Kein Mann des kränklichen Ausgleichs. Hauptsache, es geht schnell. Ich denke, wir alle haben bereits einen Kandidaten. Einem Santori als Papst werde ich nie meine Zustimmung geben. Bleibt ruhig. Könnt ihr nicht zählen? Unser lieber und ehrwürdiger Santori hat die Stimmen der Spanier und die der Venezianer, der Toskaner und ein paar mehr. Wir brauchen 35 Stimmen und die haben wir. Was wollt ihr tun? Santori hat tatsächlich die Stimmen. Bei der ersten Abstimmung morgen früh morgen. wird schon. Noch ist es nicht morgen. Wir haben noch eine ganze Nacht. Ich sage euch, noch nie ist ein Papst so rasch gewählt worden. Ja, ich rieche schon das verbrannte Fleisch und höre schon das Rasseln der Ketten. Aber wer wird die Kerke der Engelsburg füllen? Keine Diebe, keine Bettler. Männer wie ihr und ich. Santori ist jetzt schon mächtiger als ein Papst. Und wie viel Macht wird er erst haben, wenn er selbst auf dem heiligen Stuhl sitzt? Santori's opponents seem hopelessly outnumbered. Encouraged by the support of his friends, Santori already sees himself as the new Pope. This will prove to be a fateful error of judgment. Seid ihr bereit für die Wahl? Ihr seid die Hoffnung Spaniens. Einigkeit. All eure Verfehlungen seien vergeben. Weiche von mir. 
Satan. Santos Kirche ist nicht länger meine Kirche. Wir haben die Mehrheit. Das wird ein unerhörter Skandal. Wir müssen nur fest zusammenstehen. Dann wird dieses grundlos aufgeregte Häuflein zu den ersten Gehörden, die dem neuen Papst zujubeln. Wenn Sie dem Konklave fernbleiben, dann haben wir eine neue Kirchenspaltung. Denkt nur an das Leid, das der Kirche nach dem Abfall der verfluchten Protestanten... Es gibt auch andere Kardinäle, die das Vertrauen der spanischen Krone haben und sich vorzüglich für das Amt des Papstes eignen. Santori's enemies have used the night to their advantage and stirred up fears of a schism in the church. There is no room for bonds of friendship in this game. Santori is dropped by his former supporters, a sacrifice to diplomacy. Diese Nacht war schmerzlicher als jeder unheilvolle Augenblick, den ich je erlebt hatte. Die tiefe Betrübnis meiner Seele und die innere Angst ließen mich, es war kaum zu glauben, Blut schwitzen. Ich ging in mich und sah, wie zerbrechlich, wie vergänglich und wie elend alle weltlichen Dinge waren. Und dass nur in Gott und seiner Anbetung das wahre Glück, der wahre Sinn und die Freude zu finden sei. Und ich bittete auch für meine Verfolger. Of all people, Santori's worst enemy becomes Pope. Santori's life's work seems irrevocably destroyed. But even in this hour of his deepest humiliation, Santori does not give up. Soon his enemies need him, the experienced Inquisitor, for an important trial is about to begin. The trial against the monk, Giordano Bruno. Bruno is a refugee from the Dominican order. Instead of fighting against heretics, he has become one himself. Because of the severity of the accusations raised against him, Bruno is incarcerated in the dungeon of Castel Sant'Angelo, which is reserved for the church's most intractable enemies. Bruno has essentially been on the run for years, his life one long journey all over Europe running the gamut of all Occidental religions. He makes enemies wherever he goes. He calls them fools, swine and asses. But nowhere do the irascible scholar's ideas cause more provocation than in Rome. Giordano Bruno says that there can be many worlds. And so... Giordano Bruno thought it possible that many worlds existed. And if there were many worlds, there could be no one center. This struck at the heart of a worldview which considered Rome the center. He had doubts that Mary was really a virgin and about many other things, but he did not express these doubts in a dogmatic fashion. For him, it was a question of intellectual freedom. I believe the insistence on this freedom is still very important for young people today. The trial against Bruno drags on for seven agonizing years. The church does not make things easy for itself. Even to the present day, it still feels threatened to its core by Bruno. The church cannot pursue intellectual reconciliation in cases when it is obliged to say no. So we cannot speak of rehabilitation in the literal sense. We cannot pretend that Bruno's teachings are Catholic or Christian doctrine. According to legend, Bruno resisted the tribunal heroically. In reality, he even denies being the author of his own works. When the inquisitors are at a loss for what to do, they propose to torture Bruno. The decision is alone the Pope's to make. He says no, that arguments, not torture, shall defeat Bruno. At a crucial point in his trial, Bruno again offered to recant. But he said he would recant only if the Pope condemned a long list of heresies which he had composed. 
And I think that this case is a very good example, not only of the heretic playing the role of the inquisitor, but of the central problem in the case of heresy. Heresy is primarily a question of authority. Who possesses the authority to condemn doctrinal error and to recognize what is the truth? And that was an authority which Giordano Bruno claimed for himself. With wissenden Augen and Verstand, begnadet durch die Güte Gottes, bin ich in das Amt des Vorsitzenden Richters berufen. Zu jeder Zeit werde ich nicht ungerecht sein gegen jene, die mein Gericht anrufen. Noch werde ich undankbar sein gegen die göttliche Gnade, die mich nicht blind gemacht hat, sondern zum Führer unter den Blinden. Und die all meine Kraft einzusetzen von mir forderte, die leuchtende Wahrheit zu verteidigen. These would seem to be the words of an inquisitor, and yet they are uttered by Giordano Bruno. By the time the trial ends, prosecutor and victim seem virtually indistinguishable. Bruno has given up his lifelong game of hide and seek. He now resolutely stands up for his beliefs and pays for this with a death sentence. It is signed by Santori and by Cardinal Bellamine, who is today revered as a saint by the church. We know from the gospel that the church is not a club comprised solely of the pure. Christ himself sat down at the sinner's table. That has always been the reality of the church. This was not only so in the past, it is also true now, and we have to keep that in mind. However, that methods such as torture and burning at the stake were employed indicates that those responsible did not read the gospel carefully or failed to pay any heed to crucial aspects of it schlecht gelesen und in wesentlichen Dingen vergessen hat. Burning heretics goes against the teachings of the gospel. One can argue with heretics, but one must not burn them. The church was wrong, not only from the perspective of today, but also from the perspective of that time. If a heretic is burned at the stake for his ideas, then another thinker will not dare express similar opinions. That kind of thing is basically tantamount to a manhunt. Un altro pensatore che non ha fatto quella affermazione, ma ne ha fatta una vicina. Allora, per poi ci fu una caccia all'uomo. Ihr dürft euch nicht zurückziehen, Vater. Ihr seid Herz und Seele der Inquisition. Ihr besitzt Fähigkeiten, von denen ich ein Leben lang nur träumen konnte. Nehmt nur den Prozess gegen diesen Mönch Bruno. Ihr allein habt ihm seine spitzfindigen Verdrehungen der Wahrheit Punkt für Punkt widerlegt. Aber ihr hattet die Tatkraft, mit dem zögernden Papst übereinzukommen, dass der Scheiterhaufen für Bruno unvermeidlich sei. Euch gebührt der Sieg. Jeder dieser Siege ist ein Sieg zu viel. Einem zur rechten Zeit verbrannten Ketzer ist die Wohltat erwiesen, dass er niemals zu seinem Irrglauben zurückkehren kann, der unzweifelhaft seine ewige Verdammnis bewirken wurde. Gewiss, mein lieber Bellamin, gewiss. Rhetorisch und theologisch kann ich euch nicht mehr das Wasser reichen. Aber... An Erfahrung fehlt es euch doch. Euer Bild von der heiligen Inquisition als todbringende Waffe bedarf der Korrektur. Öffnet den Deckel. Diese Pistole.
wenn ich es auf meinen Schreiber abfeuere, kann ich sie nicht mehr gegen euch einsetzen. Erschieße ich euch, bleibt der Schreiber verschont. Entschließe ich mich aber, meine geladene Pistole nur in der Hand zu halten. Dann kann ich euch beide in Schach halten. Oder, wenn es Not tut, tausend andere. Wenn ich schießen muss, und manchmal muss ich es, habe ich vorher einen Fehler gemacht. Bruno's sentencing marks the end of Santori's career. The Grand Inquisitor dies two years later, in 1602. If one had to sum up his life in a few words, one could say this much. The Protestants had been driven out of Italy completely. More than 50 heretics paid for Santori's religious fanaticism with their lives. The image of cynical sadists is a false image. We are dealing with men who are very often limited. We're dealing with men who are sometimes stupid. We are dealing with a few men, I would have said not many, who are fanatics. But we're dealing with a very large number of others who believe they are, that they are foot soldiers in a battle against heresy. Santori is succeeded by Cardinal Robert Bellamine. he would be faced with a completely new opponent. Modern science would change the world more radically than any heretic ever could. This is one enemy that cannot be defeated at the stake.